Hello and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel. Today we're continuing our series on Blood and Plunder Legends. I'm Joseph and with me is Guy. Hello. And Dan. Yar. Today we're looking at Lorne's de Graff, de Graff, one of the legendary French commanders. Let's look at a bit of history on him and then look at how he plays in the game and his factions. Who was Lorne's de Graff? Well, you mentioned him being a French commander, and while he is in the game, he is notably a Dutch man who was a Spanish veteran who only came to the French in after his 20s. He is uh, honestly, if you think of a pirate of the Caribbean, quote unquote, Lauren de Graff is a really good place to start. Flowing blonde hair, going to some records, a really curly mustache and had minstrels follow him everywhere, announcing his arrival. He's a really theatrical dude. He's really fun to read about. Sounds like quite the character. A long career. A long career for a pirate. Most pirates don't really last that long. And not to say he was strictly a pirate, but as a buccaneer, he has quite a few close calls. Uh, went up against actual military navies, not just merchants. He went up against the, the, spr the, the pride of the Spanish Armada. He fought their two biggest ships in the Caribbean at the time. At the same time. <laughs> he actually even alluded to Henry Morgan, who turned pirate hunter and was never able to be captured. He outsmarted everything that people threw at him. He's hilarious. He's, I would argue he's probably the real-life Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like he was born uh, Dutch, and I read on Wikipedia that he might have been even... Uh, had some mixed blood, maybe uh, Mulatto, one of the Spanish um, nicknames for him implies that. That would be interesting. Then he served as a Spanish gunner, is that right? Yeah, he served as a Spanish gunner in the uh, Armada de Barlavento. In his 20s, and then kind of went out on his own with a small ship, and upgraded ship, upgraded ship, upgraded ship. He was on a ship that was captured by French buccaneers, and... They, as was the custom of the time, they usually exacted some revenge on the officers, but he wasn't an officer, and they gave all of the the men of the ship a chance to join them. He joined them, and then they so liked him, they elected him to be captain of a, I think it was a 12-gun sloop. <laughs> wow. It's a felicitous reverse in fortune, isn't it? Yeah, T. <laughs> He immediately go from being a gunner on a Spanish ship to uh, a a French pirate, and again, never looked back. Never looked back at all. He even left a wife and possibly children behind him, and just kept sailing forward. Uh, and eventually, uh, married, who is usually known as his his wife, uh, Anne de Levalt, a who she has a, a whole history of her own, too. He's also one of the few people who is noted as a famed swordsman. That seems to be consistent with everything I've been able to dig up and listening to different podcasts. He, du he had a duel with Nicholas Van Horn, who's in the Buccaneers campaign, I believe. Yeah, Nicholas challenged him to a duel, and Lorho de Graaf not only disarmed him, but apparently took his hand and was done with it in very, very swift action. The fight only lasted a few seconds, and he kind of left him there. So this is one of the few people where you can almost see this guy swinging from the rigging, you know, with a sword and, you know, tit for tat kind of going at it. Again, he's so colorful. The model really reflects that, too. He <clears throat> has his sword out in a swordsman stance. It's quite well done. It's really a beautiful model. I love painting it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he, he's on my list. I love, I love Lawrence de Graff. But let's talk about some of his stats in the game. We've been talking about who he was, but what type of rules does he have in Blood and Plunder? Lawrence de Graff cost 42 points in the game. He has standard uh, commander weapons of brace of pistols and standard melee weapon. He has a very large 20-inch command range and three command points, uh, kind of your standard high-powered legendary stats. And then his special rules, which is what really makes him interesting, are Sailing Master, Swordsman, expert broadside, very inspiring, and felicitous. Some of those are pretty good rules. Let's break those down. For starters, the even without Commodore, that 20-inch range will mean that in a naval game with two ships, he can probably reach the other ship. 
And uh, going to the the special rules, Sailing Master lets him add one inch to its ship's move on a four during his activation. And then Swordsman is another interesting rule where models that take a fight action against Lord de Graff using standard melee weapons apply a plus one penalty to the fight test. Even if the attack unit is engaged in nearby friendly units that doesn't have the special rules. So he's, he's harder to hit. His entire unit is harder to hit. Swordsman, I think, is a little underpowered ability. It's uh, very appropriate for him, as we talked about. But so many times when you get charged, you get hit with pistols or tomahawks or something. But there is occasion where it does come in handy. Expert Broadside is a strong rule for a cannon list. He can consider all the guns he fires on his activation as one shot, which increases your likelihood of getting a critical hit. And that's the standard broadside rule. Expert means if you roll a one as your critical or your lucky hit, you can re-roll that. One does nothing as a critical hit. So if your critical does nothing, you get another chance to make it do something, which is a key way to slow your enemy ship down or distract your enemy's crewmen to actually get a leg up in the game. So that can be quite a good ability. Especially because it's not a once-per-game ability. It's every time he does a broadside. The other special ability he has is... Very inspiring, which uh, every Blood and Plunder player should know is one of the best abilities. The rule that really makes him stand out is Felicitous. If a force that includes his commander begins a t- turn with no fortune points, immediately gains one. That means you can blow all your fortune turn one, and you get a fortune every single turn after that. It's, it's insane. I've used it before. I've played with him, and it really... Helps. You get. You can always cheat death, essentially, if need be. <laughs> this is the first time it appeared as well, and it's still not really in the game at this point. Yeah, I think it's only one in uh, No Peace Beyond the Line, and there might be, I think there's one other coming in Raise the Black, if my memory serves me. But yeah, it's a very rare rule. Uh, you can get a lot of fortune off this if you're aggressive with it. It can really let you play aggressively on the first turn, spend, 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 and still have a fortune every other turn of the game. It's kind of crazy. It's like an upgraded version of God's Blessing or Devil's Luck, which is one that a lot of the legendary commanders are starting to have. I know Henry Morgan has it, and at first we thought, oh, four fortune points, that's awesome. And now we see this and go, oh, your fortune has no limit. <laughs> well, You are always fortunate. <laughs> well, you get one per turn. Uh, every time I played... Uh, Lawrence de Graff, I've used eight fortune that game because <laughs> that's what this rule really means is use all your fortune the first turn and then every turn after that you get a free fortune. You you start spending them like free money. You really do. Like a drunken pirate? Yeah, like a drunken pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I just did an article on fortune on the blog, which I encourage you to check out if you have not already. And I made some lists that kind of focus on fortune. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And I made a Lawrence de Graff list. If you have a spiritual leader, you start with four, and then you can still spend one every single turn. So you can spend nine fortune. And uh, two of his three factions we can he can lead give him a free uh, mulligan for your hand which is kind of like an extra fortune so it's yep. almost like 10 <laughs> fortune <laughs> yeah so yeah you can manipulate fate a lot with this guy he can lead the french buccaneers which is a solid bread and butter seagoing french faction pretty standard it just has that ability to mulligan your hand once during the game for free and does it not does it have the free grape shot rule as well? Yes. So you can shoot, you can get grape shot for free if you only shoot grape shot the whole game. Good faction that has the French Royal Navy, which all your units get, all veterans in training get brawlers, and you get plus four for the attacker roll. And then once per game, you can reroll a lucky or critical against opposing ships rigging. Ooh, wow, that kind of. Lays on top of his expert broadside. Every time you get a critical luck, you're going to have an option to mess around with it. Yeah, and especially the French gun gunner list that Lawrence Graff wants to be a part of. You're going to want to go after your opponent's rigging anyways, just to kind of uh, make them 
den in the water while you sail around them. French aren't usually known for their gunnery, but Lawrence de Groff with the expert broadside and the other his other abilities can kind of bring gunnery more to the forepoint, even on a smaller ship like a sloop. Well, yeah, let's talk about his faction. That really is where it really comes together, isn't it? Yes, it makes all of his sailor units into Zelaiden, which, as we know, are the best sailor unit. They're better than Zelaiden. Uh, so, it, big rule here is all units in the forest gain the expert gun crew special rule. So, this is the filibusters to graph. So, expert gun crew, yeah, French really don't have access to that, except for the occasional support unit and master gunner. And it's a big deal. Activating on a heart with a gun crew now you get a free reload plus two reloads already so that's three reloads without doing any command points or anything it's very powerful so yeah this is one of the best gun crews in the game then plus you have the marines inherent nastiness on a melee so mm -hmm. you can do everything you can sail because you got sailing master you can shoot because you got expert gun crew and you can melee because you have five fight and hard chargers and you can reroll all your luckies and criticals, basically. You could even put your Bucanese, uh, Flibuzes, and Marines. Your Bucanese and Flibuzes also get expert gun crew. So you could have Flibuzes on your cannons if you wanted, <laughs> or swivel guns. Or you can make your Engagés uh, expert gun crew. <laughs> ah, even better. Or, <laughs> oh, even your, your Marcel's Descarabies. <laughs> oh, that that sounds fun. <laughs> this force is tailor made to just wreak havoc on your opponent's rigging. Between his special rules, like we mentioned, you can really just whittle down that rigging. If you got a fat someone who's in a faster ship than you, you could just let loose, and you'll you'll catch up to him eventually. It's really hard to sail when you know there's holes in your sails, especially Ooh, if you got if, if they got guys up in the the fighting tops too. Double prizes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> double double prizes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've pl I played this list before. I played on the filibusters to Graf, or filibustiers to Graf, and they're brutal. They are brutal. They're, again, they're one of those few naval factions where you can feel comfortable, you know, man the cannons and boarding, and if someone's dumb enough to board you, you can repel them with relative ease. Marins are a really solid unit. He really brings them up to par with his forces special rule. With that expert gun crew. Yeah, and also, though, that Lourdes de Graff does a lot of the heavy lifting on it with him having Sailing Master and very inspiring and three command points. That's an expert broadside. That's and Felicitous. That does a lot of the heavy lifting on his faction. Them being expert gun crew is kind of icing on the cake for them getting that free reload on hearts. <laughs> So he's good. He's cool. He's we got to compare him to other forty plus point commanders or the other legendaries. So does he measure up against Henry Morgan and Piet Hein? I think he does. I think he is worth those two more points than uh, Piet Hein. Are you gonna let that stand, Dan? Um, I think it's a different kind of commander. Piet Hein's strength is you really, while he's good, again, he's good at sea, he's a solid sea commander, while he doesn't have quite as much fortune, if you stick him with a group of enter plug with that indomitable special rule, they're not dying and they're not running away ever. I think that where Piet Hein, I would argue, is definitely more of a border, and while, he, again, he has the Commodore and broadside special rule, he is definitely more capable chopping heads and running, running his guys over the side. I think that well, I love Piet Hein, and he's the only commander we have here, I believe, that's actually captured the Spanish treasure fleet. Throw that out there, as I usually yep. do. I think that I think that de Graff is definitely more versatile of the two. He's definitely better than Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan, that misfortune at sea can really bite you in the butt. Ooh. <laughs> I think I that agree. Henry Morgan's good on land, but if you're going to take him at sea, I think misfortune at sea is just... it's. It's terrible. So from someone who ran aground recently, and I rarely ever do, it hurt a lot, and not being able to fortune that or anything, like, uh, I think definitely if you're going to go on land, stick with Henry Morgan, looking at DeGraff's list, it's definitely more of a seagoing faction. So you're basically trading that versatility, you're trading that versatility at sea 
for if you want Piet Hein, because if Piet Hein, you're, you're going to board. With Lawrence DeGraff, you can do kind of do both. Henry Morgan, you're going to want to fight a land battle. I think Morgan could still go to see. He has to be careful. Um, but yeah, I agree. Piet Hein is more of a personal mm-hmm. leader. He's going to lead the charge, where uh, Lawrence DeGraff is more of a charismatic leader that inspires or that leads the whole force. And I still can't uh, get over the luck he and God's blessing of the devil's luck and the uh, tricky activation card. Henry Morgan does have a more interesting faction uh, special rule with the uh, changing your cards. And it's it's so much fun yeah, to do. That, Again, Lawrence DeGroff, it just gives all your guys expert gunner, which the if you're running gunless, you're running Marines anyways. They already have artillery crew. And then they just become expert artillery crew. So you get a free reload on hearts. But that free reload on hearts is, again, makes them just as good as Zelaiden. They become Zelaiden at that point. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Because usually your Zelaiden aren't on, aren't on sailing duty. They're manning cannons. Yeah. I really so. think it tips it in his favor because while, well, yes, Henry Morgan has Lucky, you still only get four fortune. Like, that's the, that's the thing the difference is. Well, Lucky allows you to re-roll, you know, to maybe get it in your favor. With Lauren DeGroff, you can just keep going because, oh, that one messed up. Well, I'll get another one next turn. Yeah, you get eight <laughs> fortune. I think my personality likes Lucky more than Felicitas. Lucky, I mean, I can push for that <laughs> dramatic win. <laughs> Felicitas is too reliable <laughs> and boring. <laughs> you do get a little, you do get a little share of yourself with the eight fortune with Lawrence de Graff. Uh, I remember again, when I've played him, there are a couple times when I use the fortune I just got to redraw a new hand because I just didn't like it. So <laughs> before I even played mo- any of the turn, the fortune's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the only real con we have is that, you know, he's not, he's not a land force. He is strictly C only. Whereas Piet Hein, even he is still C only. Henry Morgan can do a little bit of both. Again, I personally think that Misfortune at C is going to, when it, it makes it so if you run the ground or something bad happens, it hurts even worse. But Henry Morgan can still do both. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that as a con. I just see that as a it's characteristic. He, I mean, you don't, yeah. you don't have to make a force to go with a land or C. So he's a great C commander. But yeah, there's no reason to take him in line. I think just Lord Zagroff, he kind of does everything you want a commander to do. He's what he's the model French commander, isn't he? Isn't that what you said? Yeah, <laughs> the model, the model French captain, the model Dutch, <laughs> Spanish, French captain. Well, I think that wraps it up. You can look back at our uh, Henry Morgan legendary video, and you can check out the blog for some reviews on some more legendary factions and other factions and nations, and articles on all things blood and plunder. Check out all the articles in the blog check out the rest of our youtube channel as well we'll be aiming to put out a video every monday subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads and as always keep your dice ready the wind at your back your heart